morning everyone and welcome again to our backyard it's kind of early this morning and I wanted to get out into the garden before it got sunny and I got distracted and so today I wanted to focus on attracting hummingbirds to our garden and my gardening adventure, I'm going to walk here. My gardening adventure started out wanting to attract, oh, a couple of years ago, wanting to attract butterflies and hummingbirds into our garden. And it has just grown from there. So I'm going to take today and to focus on in our yard what has attracted the hummingbirds the most. Some of our plants attract butterflies more, some attract hummingbirds, and some attract both. And this particular plant that I'm showing you is called a cigar plant, or kufia. And the variety is David Verity. And both hummingbirds and butterflies love this plant. Hummingbirds are highly attracted to the cigar plant. And this year, I have more than one in my yard just because of that. Next to it, I do have hibiscus. This happens to be a red hibiscus. These are tropical hibiscus. And this flower, when it will open, is more of a yellow flower. Hummingbirds do like hibiscus, and they will visit it, but it's not necessarily their favorite in my yard, but I did want to include it because I do see them go to it. Okay, I'm going to walk over to another plant that I have actually two plants in this pot. And it's not blooming as much right now, but in this pot I have a plant. Let me see if I can get a better angle here called Rosellia or firecracker plant and it has red tubular flowers all along here and it just it had flowered very nicely fairly recently and I have it in a pot of a hybrid kufia cigar plant this one happens to be from proven winners that's supposed to be more of a drought uh, um, a dwarf variety and this is called vermilionaire but the hummingbirds are very attractive let's see if I can get close here's a see if it, I can get focused on this this is Rucellia. hummingbirds like this a lot okay and now I'm going to show you a plant that we just planted from seed. And so it's not very big, but I'm going to put in the upper top of the video here another video that I did last fall of our cardinal climber. And it just gets so large and it um, comes up the trellis. You can see it's starting. And this vine we grow from seed every year and by the time the fall mu hummingbird migration is in full swing I'm gonna walk back out and pan this trellis this five peat part trellis is absolutely covered with blooms we can have upward of four to five hundred red trumpet shaped blooms a day and that's one of the reasons why we do plant the Cardinal Climber annual vine. Okay, I'm going to continue to walk over to another bed that we have. And this plant is called Flamacanthus. It's not blooming right now, but it also has a small shaped red cup flower. And... Um, it is the host plant to the Texas Crescent butterfly, but hummingbirds in Texas love 
this particular shrub and it's a small shrub you can train it you can cut it we actually have it um, staked as you can see and it's growing really nicely okay I'm gonna come over a little bit here I do have another David Verity Kufia that's coming back from the freeze and so it's just starting to come back This plant hummingbirds really like to visit, and it is called Salvia lucantha, or the Mexican bush sage. It has a really unique flower to it. It's purple with a white flowering petal, and the hummingbirds like to come and visit this pretty regularly. Next to it, I have a couple other salvias. This one is salvia amante. More of a scarlet pink flower. And this is salvia amistad, which is a purple flower. And hummingbirds and bees love both of these and butterflies actually land on these plants. And it's still March here, so I'm very happy with how our plants are coming back and flowering and blooming. And we certainly have um, had hummingbirds come through. The male hummingbirds are migrating through, and so we'll have visitors each day as they continue their trek up north and these are the plants that they love to visit. Of course, I also put up hummingbird feeders for them. You can see on my pole there. But the plants and the bugs, the natural bugs are really what attract hummingbirds to the yard. Okay, this is an unusual plant. It's called a porter weed and <laughs> since December this particular red porter weed has been our workhorse in our yard that our pollinators will gravitate to whether it's a hummingbird that we've overwintered or butterflies or bees or bugs porter weeds are absolutely chock full of nectar and it replaces they replace the nectar during the day and so they are visited constantly I have a porter weed next to it that we had to overwinter and it was a little bit tougher. This is a purple porter weed and it's just starting to come back now. So I'm going to zoom in on the flowers and if I have to say preferences of one to the other, um, this I've been so grateful for the red porter weed and what it's done, but our pollinators actually if they have a choice, prefer the purple porter weed a little bit more, um, but but they do they do go to both. Okay, I'm going to pan over now. Just haven't finished my bed here, so it's not in the greatest of shape. But I do want to point out this. This is our coral honeysuckle, and I planted this specifically for hummingbirds. Bees and butterflies also love it, but they have these wonderful, long, elongated flowers. And the reason I wanted coral honeysuckle is because it is a Texas native, and I actually have it in pots here on this side. And then around the corner I have them trellised and I have them planted in the ground on this side. And it's one of the earliest flowering plants that we have available for the hummingbirds that do migrate north in the springtime. And so this is uh, heavily visited by our hummingbirds and I have lots of, it has lots of flowers on it. All right, I'm gonna come back into our 
so what we call our south bed garden. I'll show you a plant that was uh, died to the ground, but this is called firebush, and it's starting to come back from the roots. Grows very nicely here in the Gulf Coast area, and it also has elongated blooms that both butterflies and hummingbirds love. Firebush is a staple in our yard. We have one back there that's going to be coming back. This one, I think, did not survive the horrible freeze we had in December, so I will be replacing it because I do like the back of this bed completely covered in firebush and the hummingbirds and butterflies really like it. Okay, I'm going to come around. Sorry if I'm jerking the camera here. And this plant is called a Turk's cap. And I'm also going to link, if you look up at the top of the video, I'm going to link another video that I have last year of hummingbirds visiting this plant. Um, it died back during our freeze, but it's coming back nicely. And they have um, red flowers that, that are smaller, but they resemble hibiscus that don't open. They're really interesting, and hummingbirds are just attracted. Butterflies, too. Um, but are just attracted to this particular plant. Okay, well, thank you for joining me in the plants that are in our yard, <laughs> in particular, that hummingbirds enjoy. You know, I just Googled and started out this journey by Googling what are the best hummingbird attractor plants in Texas along the Gulf Coast. And I started with that and I have most of those plants in our yard. And some of the other plants I've gotten, for instance, the porter weed wasn't on that list, but I noticed it was on my butterfly list and oh my goodness, the butterflies and hummingbirds love porter weeds. So I did want to include that in this video today. In any case, thank you for joining me. I would wish you luck in your journey if you are trying to attract hummingbirds to your yard. And I hope you all have a great day.